Welcome in. Back nine. Here we go. Jumping right in. Uh, hole 10. This is probably the hardest hole in the course. Uh, it could easily be a par four just because of how you have to get there. You have to play down after 350 feet into this little grotto cutting area. Definitely a tough hole. I would wholeheartedly believe that this is one of the hardest holes on the course. Um, personally, for me, I got a three for the very first time in the second round of this tournament, and I was absolutely nice. ecstatic. You really want to make sure you avoid those trees on the right. If you land over there, you are in jail, and you are definitely looking at a bogey at best. Yeah, it gets pretty hairy pretty quick. Tony looks like he's throwing his first shot as a falling Annie, and it just falls out a little too soon. Hard to tell where that landed, but we'll see what kind of scramble game he'll have to get up and down for the three. And Tony looks like he's lining up a similar style shot. Um, we'll see where he lets this one go. Definitely trying to throw something up and over. Doesn't look like he's taking the low route. Agreed. And, yep, he's trying to cut the corner. Oh, and the oh. wind pushes him down. Ooh, that's trouble. Oh, that is trouble. Very common on this hole, though. What are you lining up here? I was trying to flick my destroyer and just, just get every inch of the air, taking the actual, like, angle at it. And it looked so Coming perfect. Coming in hot. It looked uh. so perfect. Oh, man, that tree catches so many discs. Threw it right next to my dad. You'll have a pretty pretty open shot there. Yeah, kind of right where I wanted to be, honestly, if I didn't get all the way down there. As we said, this is such a hard hole to get a two on. Absolutely. And Ryan cutting the corner as well. He did not get batted down, though, so he might have a, a decent look. Oh, but it faded left. Looks like I saw it leak out left a little bit. Oh, this no. is what you're left with. Yeah, and I'm kind of pinched behind this tree here. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty tricky upshot. Just trying to get it down there, though. Really nothing tricky to it unless I do that. And the tree I was aiming for to miss, of course, I hit it dead center. Isn't that always how it goes? Unfortunately. Uh, more often than I would like. And look at how fortunate Toner gets here. He's got an open ceiling. I can't, that is so rare when you land in this little wooded area. Yep. Oh, wow. What a great upshot. It gets the trickle. Ryan's second shot to the green. Okay, so we missed his line up there. Oh, and we missed Tony's second as well. Ooh. Oh, oh great bid. I, I believe that was for par. Wow. Wow. We were, we were playing fast, I think, on this spot too fast for the camera guys to get in position. Yeah, like you said, it was smoking hot out, out here this day, and um, big shout out to tournament director Renee Farr for doing such a great job running this tournament. She set it up similar to how the Pro Tour is running this year with you guys, the MPO division, teeing off last, so you guys are definitely in the heat of the day. That was a lot warmer than we wanted, and I am very upset about that bogey there. I thought I did everything right, and just that second time that, that hole's got me this weekend. And it looks like this is what Toner's got for the three. Not too far, but still a little tricky. Oh, and he really wanted that one. You got to think maybe no he's oh, taking an extra second or just still in disbelief. And you see Ryan walking off to the left over there. He had hidden a cooler in that little stone formation, so he had a bunch of cold drinks. He was he was more excited about the cooler, I think, than the. Uh, and the three he got on the hole. Oh, that's great. You know, I've actually seen somebody's disc slide up into that little stone. Really? Oh, yeah. In that little gap, that man. Little that's, gap that's, that's not fun. All right, hole 11. Uh, short hole. par three. One of the more technical holes on the course. Uh, there's a triple mando right on the front of the box that forces you to play right down this little tunnel, left side or right side. Most of them are going to go on the right, I believe. I absolutely love this hole. I like to take a mint disc's bobcat and throw a left-handed flick and just mash it as hard as I can and look for that fade back into the basket on the left. I bet a mid-range is what most of you guys are going to be pulling out. Yeah, I think Ryan's throwing a truth here and just gets it right where he wants it. And that's going to be looking great. looking really good. Yeah, these trees right here next to the camera on the front of the box, they make you a little bit nervous. You kind of have to stop shorter than you want to. And Tony throwing the same line, a little straighter. Oh, Ooh. gets a nice skip. I got a nice skip up the middle there. Not a long hole, so he, he probably still has a shot at the two there. Toner looks like he's lining up a mid-range as well. Is that the Bobcat? I think looks so. Like Ooh, and he hit the tree. 
Justice. Justice. I already hit the tree right in the middle. I'm throwing a buzz OS here. Fast and on the right side. Hopefully Heiser's to the left. A little bit of double camera and action. I got That's the nice. Perfect and skip. man, that looks good. I see my Jedi mind powers telling it to jump in the distance. Worked out perfectly. And it looks like we all have two putts at this bad boy. Toner looks about 50 out. Yeah, I'd say that may be a little bit longer. Ooh. Oh, good bid. Nice aggressive bid. Just a little high. Give it a chance. And Tony skidded all the way up here. He's what within the kick. circle. Takes advantage. No hesitation on the field goal putt right between two trees. He says, yes, please. Birdie, please. And Ryan's dealing with a little bit of a low ceiling. And it got to him. Wow, great shot. Yeah, I was I was happy to be where I was. A little bit too far, but, you know, I've, the, the backside's cleared out a little bit more than usual. So. Yeah, no hesitation on that putt. You jammed it in there and made sure it wasn't going anywhere. Trying to stop thinking about it, honestly. And we'll get our tap-ins. All right, and couple of birdies, on. couple of pars, moving on. All right. Hole 12. Uh, par 4. About 440, uh, it shoots straight at this OB vineyard. So you basically have to go over the vineyard, and then it takes about a 45 degree turn to the left down a corridor between these two rows of trees. And the basket is guarded at the end by a cedar tree with a little bit of a low ceiling. So definitely a tricky shot, but one of the holes that is eagleable. For me personally, Bonner, this is my favorite hole on this course. Nice. Um, it's just so rewarding. Um, and the ladies' division to get a, even a three on this hole feels so good. Yeah, you get a three, you're 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 feeling great. Yeah, absolutely attainable. Just making sure you have a great clean tee shot. Yeah, it does shoot a gap right out the front. That gap that Tony misses. Oh no, he's gonna have some work to do. That is the the first mistake you don't want to make there. And once again, I'm I'm stepping up to this and I'm thinking eagle. I'm I know that I have to make some moves, so I'm putting every inch of my throw into this. Got the height. I think I threw that one just a little too straight. I needed to needed to hyzer a little bit quicker than that. Ryan throws a very similar shot. Okay, yeah, it is a little bit deceiving too. So if you throw it too straight, you'll kind of land over there on the left and and be stuck with a little bit of a tough upshot. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of a place your position on this one. You know, you don't want to be left or right. You're blocked up. As long as you have a shot down that corridor we showed you earlier, uh, you've got a great chance at the birdie. Yeah, and that's really the mo of this entire course is just setting yourself up clean and trying no, to stay out of that was, you know natural ob in those trees. And Toner it. just wow. cured that line. Fantastic Absolutely perfect shot. And see, this is the trouble Tony's got. He's got no real way to attack. Definitely playing for the four already. Absolutely, just trying to salvage. And he was still away. The struggle's continuing for Tony. He he just really wants to get up and down from here and get a par and, and get on to the next hole. And this shot is not easy. Yeah, once again, he's a little bit out of position. But as we have seen him do time and time again already, he is no stranger to piping a difficult approach shot. Yep, he's definitely looking looking to work some magic here. And scoots on up. Hit the ground probably a little sooner than he wanted, but not bad. Yep, and I got caught by those trees, so ah. a little bit out of position, but should be able to do my little patented monster flick and skip shot. And I'll take it yeah. inside the circle there. Definitely want to say thanks to that tree whenever you walk by. <laughs> Yes, uh, I say thank you to that tree by not cutting it down every time I do work on the course. It survived a few few trimmings nowadays. Absolutely. Good little half go there from Toner, and Tony's just trying to get up and down, and oh, sit down. And yeah, Toner, that was for Eagle. He made this hole look easy, uh, and he's sitting underneath the basket for his birdie, so. Nothing to scoff at. Ryan for the bird. Ah, uh, juices it just a little bit. Trying to will it in there. I finally started getting some putts to go here, uh, and we can see the chase card there a couple holes ahead. They are quiet, calm, collected. <laughs> I started having a little fun, I think, at this part of the round. Best you can do. You know, just got to remember that 
you know, this event is unsanctioned, and while you're still trying to obviously play good and take it seriously, it's all about having fun out here and being with your friends and Absolutely. making the best of it. I think everybody was just excited to to, to play the event. We, we kind of weren't sure if we were even going to have it uh, with all the COVID concerns, but I really am glad we were able to have it with limited players. Uh, we did cap it, but, you know, at least we still got to have it. So uh, hole 13 here. This is an island hole. We're playing from the short box. Um, so basically our players just have to get over the road. If you're over the road, you're good. If you don't clear the road, there is a drop zone cut from that little light fixture you see on the left of the road there. Yeah, and the drop zone is, it's a pretty challenging putt. It's makeable, but you're definitely looking to land in the island. Yes, yeah, about 40 feet, and I hit really short. Oh. Didn't get anywhere near the island, so I'm best going to get a three on this hole. Mike Toner scooting, and he scoots all the way across. All he the way across. Safe. He's safe. He'll have a bit of a challenging putt. Ryan going with the thumber, probably what I should have thrown there. And it's just right next to the basket. Man, what a great tool to have in your bag. And, you know, for me, as with a softball background, I sure do wish that that was something that I could put in my arsenal. Um, so one day. <laughs> a great shot right there from Ryan. Practice makes perfect, right? One step at a time. Absolutely. And Tony, similar struggles. I don't think that he made it across either. So and this here is for you my are par. For the par. Just trying to get a three and get on to the next hole. And I didn't, I, uh, I just completely whiffed that through it. Juiced so it, tall. Juiced it just a little bit. and Going to have actually a little bit of a tester for your comeback. Yeah, I kind of pushed it into the woods there. Not, not what I was hoping for, but, you know, move on. And Tony, Tony gave it a better chance. Oh, but so kind of just hit the rim on the right and didn't quite finish. Unfortunate. And Toner for his birdie. Just sailed it. And you can see the trees moving a little bit. The wind was definitely starting to pick up. At definitely this point some around. wind picking up. And those straddle putts out of the brush, those are so challenging, no matter what distance you're at. And I am in trouble here. I, I had Man. such a tough time getting a footing. There were sticks stabbing me in the back. And at some point, I was just like, all right, just take the putt. Yeah, it's definitely possible to walk away with uh, bloody ankles out here if, if you get caught up in that brush. But, ugh. And you can see the frustration. Definitely. I, I, I knew that that was bad. I just took a five on a birdie hole. And the, the oh, troubles toner. continue. Toner missing right. This was not a good hole for us. And poor Ryan's got to step up to this birdie putt. There you go. No Showing hesitation. you guys how it's done. No hesitation. You can see him exhale in relief. <laughs> Man, <laughs> everybody's just so glad to just walk away from this hole. Yeah, he was, he was definitely happy that it, uh, it was over. And I cannot believe it. I just and took a five. And you are happy that that hole is over as well. Definitely. Definitely ready to move on. And Toner cleans up for the four, unfortunately. Yeah, that's that's one of those birdie to bogey situations. and Not what you want, but there's still plenty of golf left. All right, hole 14. Uh, this is another one that we set up in a temporary basket. Maybe a little tougher. Usually the pin's on the left side. This time, however, we placed it a little farther and down on the right. Uh, you can see the road there. It acts as a river, so it is out of bounds. And we replaced that basket. We weren't playing <laughs> on a sharpshooter. Uh, but the wind is right in our face on this hole. It takes a really big flick or a really big Anheuser shot. Yeah, I was really happy with the adjustment that you made on this hole. I really liked the new pin placement and the challenges that it brought this. Um, and throwing straight into that headwind just adds a whole other element. This is looking like a pretty good shot. Yeah, I think he fell off the road there and has a birdie putt from the other side. Very Tony nice. Going with the Annie shot. And didn't see how that one finished. I think he hit the trees on the right short. And Tony throwing the same Annie line. Got over just the trees and just cruises wow. downtown. Wow. He overthrew that by about 150 feet. That is what it looks like. What a mash. Yep. And I'm throwing Firebird here, flicking it low, and I just hit the ground almost immediately. Just a little bit too low. And this is my second shot. I guess they weren't in position on me, but I basically had the same exact shot, just a little shorter. So I took the monster, and boom. Great Damage up. control. Just happy I got back to that spot. 
Toner from the trees. Yeah, and he had favorable line there and lays it up underneath the basket for a nice That's a par. Great shot. I would definitely consider this a bonus birdie if you were to get that one. Oh, good bid from Ryan. Ooh, and he just misses on the right side there. And that was a great upshot, considering just how far away he was on that one. Toner looking to clean up here, which he does. Grabs that nice par. I mean, not what he wanted, but after that first shot, not a bad situation. Wow, I didn't realize how uh, close Ryan was flirting with that little vineyard OB right he there. He was on the line, so he got to take his three feet of relief from that OB line. But, yeah, he was very, very close to OB on that shot. So we're all just trying to clean up our pars here and move on to the next hole. And it is cooking. It is so hot at this point in the day. I know you guys are just looking to get on into some shade on these next couple of holes. Thankfully, we had some clouds, but I swear they were avoiding the sun. So we never got much of a shade benefit. But yeah. you're absolutely right. It is steamy out there at this point. Uh, I've taken the hat off and just trying to let my head breathe a little bit there. Yep. And it looks like you got a little bit of a gallery. Yeah, at this point, we had uh, quite a few spectators that were following us, uh, socially distanced, of course, but uh, it was nice to have uh, a little bit of a gallery cheering us on, you know, root for good shots, commiserating on the bad ones. Absolutely. Uh, this hole's pretty straightforward. It's a flick up and over the trees, about 300 feet. Uh, you're going to see most of us take a flick, I believe, except for Toner, doing his patented Annie shot when everybody That's else right. flicks. Whatever you're comfortable with. And he threw this shot perfectly. And we didn't see how that one finished, but I believe he is very, very close. That's an awesome shot. That's right. Tony did throw the backhand on this. I forgot. They both threw pretty good shots, if I remember correctly. You know, I think that's a that's a, a good, fair shot um, as a lefty predominant forehand player. I actually even take the, the Annie flick on this hole and really? try to flex it through those trees. Um, you know, I tried the backhand a couple of times, and it's just it's just such a low ceiling to try to get through and... Well, you can do what I did, which is throw way too low and end up nowhere near the basket. And Ryan there's that big the flick. Hike. Yep, that's that's the typical shot you see. And he almost oh falls in the gosh. basket. Wow, what, what a, shot. a shot. That's a big, big butt for the big birdie there. Those are the best kind. Stress-free. You're looking to cash in here. Yeah, this was a this was a tough one. Had to split a bunch of trees and oh. really just didn't have much of a look there. Oh, and Toner got caught up a little early. Ooh, man, I thought that was going in. Was looking for it. Great bid. And Tony yes. cramming it in there for Bird. That was a nice big putt. I, he was definitely outside the circle on that one. Oh yeah, what a great putt. That'll give him some really good momentum moving into the last couple of holes out here. Heard some big cheers from the gallery on that one down at the pool. That's one of the best parts about this course <laughs> yeah. is playing a hot round and then changing into your swimsuit and then cheering on everybody else after you from the pool. Yeah, and the last two holes of the course really play great for spectator golf. Uh, right next to the pool and the tournament headquarters, so lots of Lots of cheers going to be heard on the last few. Hole 16, this is a tough one. This is one of the harder par threes. Yes, it is. You have to play around this house, basically. Most of our players are going to throw a hyzer shot. It's about 350, so it takes some gas. You need it to turn sooner than you think, though, because straight on, you see those cedars, they are really trouble, and the gap is very tight. There's so much trouble on this hole. If you land short anywhere near that house, or if you're off to the right in those trees, Man, it's a you're going to be scrambling to get your par. So you're just trying to stay in the middle and look for that that right distance for that disc to flex out. And dump it. He's turning left and see he didn't get left fast enough and hit those trees. But he trickles down. Wow. Wow. Yeah, great shot. He better hug those trees. Ryan throwing the T-bird again. Same shot as uh, hole three. It's looking good. Loading nicely. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. going to like that. Great spot to be. And Toner, I believe this is a Sexton Firebird he's throwing here. It's a great choice. 
good distillation for this whole. That's the line. Yeah. Just a matter Sitting of does it get left quick enough. And it's almost like a Ooh, and poke and hope. Wow, great through. shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can put this on the perfect line and not get the great greatest result, but um, or vice versa. Yep. And I'm throwing a bigger line, trying to get it up over the trees with an ape, and I just threw that way too straight. I am in trouble. I know exactly how much trouble I'm in. Yep, you're in trying to mash on that. Yep. Definitely a, a miscalculation on my part there for that shot. And I think this is me coming out of the woods. Yeah, this is my upside down plate approach shot. Got to get creative on this. Yeah, there was literally nothing. I'm, I'm trying to slide it through a VCR slot on this on this approach. Wow! I can't believe I got it to come wow. out of the trees. Wow! What a Touch great up. out! Man, that was a. Really fantastic out. You'll be tapping in for the easy three. And happy about it as Toner crams Passion. the goose. What a great putt. Great birdie for him. This is Ryan for birdie. And oh. Just hits high. That's one he wants back. When Nasty. you get a chance at the two on this hole, you really want to want to capitalize on Absolutely. the opportunity. Absolutely. Cameraman Garen trying to get out of the way quickly because Tony's ready to fire. Oh, but he fired too soon and oh. just skips off the edge of the basket. Man, you know he wants that one back. Absolutely. I mean, you don't land in a better spot than that on this hole. And, yeah, I'm sure that's one that Tony was definitely looking to capitalize on. So we were coming down to the wire here. Uh, I think we all knew at this point that none of us had shot well enough to, to try to get a legitimate legitimate chance at the W. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to remember, I believe that Tony was a couple strokes back of me, Ryan one stroke back of him, and I was thinking, you know, we've got to make something happen. So within these next couple holes, we were we were looking for an ace or some eagle action on 18. Yep, and there's definitely the chance. So hole 17, while not the shortest hole, it is the easiest hole just because it's wide open. It is an island. Uh, plays right next to the pool here. You basically throw a putter and hope it goes in. It's the best chance you have on the entire course for an ace, and that's what we were all thinking when we stepped up to it. Absolutely. Week. Every single division from novice all the way to open is definitely looking to, looking to cash in on the birdie on this hole or the ace. And Toner throwing that Nova that he's done so well with. Feeling good about the birdie on the previous hole and just oh. slides over the line. He is on the island, but just barely. Yeah, and you know he's disappointed with that shot. That's definitely not what you want to do on this hole, but we'll see what he can do. This is one that we want to see fireworks on because there's a bunch of people watching right next to the pool. This is looking good. Tony gave it a bid there for sure. And he can hear the people cheering. Oh, yeah. While they're enjoying themselves on this hot day at the water. Ryan throwing the AVR. And he just settles up nicely. Great shot. It'll be a tap in two. And yeah, I the was problem thinking with make the this. I was thinking <laughs> go in the basket. I understand, but the problem with the ace run is that, man, it can set you up with a challenging little birdie putt, but this is looking good. Just a little high. A little too tall on that one. And I was favorably forgiven by those branches that stopped me. That was easily going out of bounds. And you can see everybody's like, oh, yeah, you did a good job. You didn't throw it in. <laughs> this is what Toner's left with for his birdie putt. And yes. he gets it. This is yes. a big pressure putt. As I said, this is near HQ, right next to the pool. There is a lot of people watching that. The pressure was definitely real. As you can see, he gives a little nod to the crowd. Oh, yeah. Tony. What a fantastic putt. Tony for his two. He was really close to the OB line. Hey, love you. Great cancels. putt. Got the little fist bump there. He's happy about that one. Very happy, big smile on his face. Knows he just made a big pressure putt. 
Now you've got two big putts to follow. I know. These guys tried to scare me out of this one. Obviously, my putt has not been on. And I almost missed it. Yeah. All Just day. good enough. Thank Just the chains on that one. They grabbed that one and settled in nicely for the birdie. Sometimes good enough is good enough. Scorecard doesn't know the difference. And the second is. star frame of the round. Well done, you guys. We're hoping for more, but, you know, uh, we did the best that we could there. And uh, all got the two. The finishing hole at Swordstone. This one's tricky, y'all. That road and everything to the right is OB, as that is Tournament HQ. So it's a par four, with the safe play being a hyzer to the left. One, once again, it's one of those holes that we can cut the corner if you've got the big 450-foot throw. So... Yeah, this is such a great finishing hole. It's just so important to stay safe off of the tee. If not, you're you're looking at a at a tough par save for the for your last hole of the round. And so Toner's going, and he throws a great shot. And it oh just yeah, hits the trees on the left. He's not bad. Point I was actually just talking to uh, Mike Perez right there behind the box, and he told me of Mike Lytle's score. And I knew I was two strokes back. So I'm thinking that I have to ace this hole in order to have a chance at the win. Yep. Which, acing a par four is a pretty hard thing to do. Mike Lytle, shout out to Team Mint. Making and a good, strong comeback. He had a nice charge from that chase card. And Tony made the safe mistake there. It doesn't look good, but he's way wide open, left side. Yeah, bailing no out trouble. to the left is definitely the, quote, mistake you want to make on this hole. This is Ryan going for the big shot. It's OB the entire way. Man, this is so impressive. And he gets so close. But he clips the trees and stops short. Oh, man. So I had to, I had to go for it on this one. There was no holding back. I was, I was thinking, I can't play safe here. I have to go for it. So I'm, I'm trying to bend my destroyer over the top of the pole barn. You got the height. Yeah, it had that nice fade that I wanted. Now it's just a matter of does it get lucky. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Off the road. I can't believe that that shot worked out. Uh, it was a prayer. And I needed it to I needed it to happen and it did. It worked out for me. That was beautiful. So Ryan threw a thumber over the top for his third shot because he was OB. Tony from the woods down here, a little bit tighter than he wanted. He needs to slow down. He overthrew that, but he did get up by the basket. And Toner, so, you know, safe mistake over here on the left side. Great shot. And yep. he just nice and easy up next to the basket. Stress-free birdie. Tony for his birdie from about 50. And he's oh. been doing it all day. And what a way day, to guy. finish. Cramming him in there. Look at that. Slow-mo. Full commitment. Hits the right spot of the chains. And that right is a there. scary putt, Bonner. If you go past that, you're going down that cliff, and you've got trouble coming back up it. It is an absolute death putt. You are right. Uh, about 40 feet behind the basket, and it drops another 15, so not where you want to be. And he proves that he's not scared by canning that absolute monster birdie putt. And this will be Toner's birdie putt. Trying not to get big putted by Tony here. Yep. And he hits the face tree. Oh, no. And this is Ryan for his par. He's down that cliff we were talking about, but he's fortunate that he's not all the way down. Great putt. Hands it. He'll be happy with that par save. Yeah, it definitely been a lot good worse. to clean up a par. Could have been a lot worse. And this was the best moment of the tournament for me, honestly. Nice little tap-in eagle. Yes, yes. Fantastic finish, Bonner. It wasn't enough to get the W, but uh, it was enough to get me third place outright. There so you go, I was, man. I was not upset about it. And Great uh, shooting all around. Yeah, shout out to Ian Fredrickson. He was not filmed on this, but Ian Fredrickson shot the hot round of the tournament with 47 Woo. from the chase card from to the chase win card. the tournament. Congrats, he, uh, Ian. He was able to do what I did last year, which is great. You know, good job, Ian, getting the NPO win. Mike Lytle, great mint team player, got second place. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, y'all. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, here we can see Tournament HQ. Nice little view of everybody that decided to hang out afterwards. Uh, can't thank our staff enough, all the guys that filmed the tournaments, everybody that participated. Yeti's writing.
Uh, Chrissy, what do you what do you have to say as we close out here? Man, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who had a hand in putting this tournament on. This was my first tournament back since all of COVID, and, and what a great place to be. So thank you so much, Bonner, for having me, and thank you to Renee, the Black Zombie. You guys are fantastic, and I just can't wait for the next one.